other cryptographic devices into uh, existing um, uh, software. The standard was created by uh, several uh, vendors of the PKC11 modules, or uh, vendors of the uh, tokens initially in 1994. Um, since then, it's been standardized with uh, RSA. We've gone off and um, it's been integrated into Netscape and uh, Intel and OpenSSL and also, or, or SunOS, and it's also, uh, there's now uh, open source products that help you create PKCS11 modules and use PKCS11 modules. Uh, in 2014, the spec was moved uh, to Oasis because RSA wasn't maintaining their specs anymore. Uh, and uh, the first version in a long time was released in, 2000, uh, in 2014, the, the 2.40 uh, spec. Um, and then this year, we should be releasing the new uh, PKCS11 uh, 3.0 spec. So what's new in that spec? Um, the main thing that we're adding to the spec is we're adding a, a bunch of uh, new functions, and that's what most of my talk will be about today. Um, in addition to the new, fun uh, new functions, we're also adding... Uh, a refresh on the mechanisms, which we do every time we do a new release. So the new mechanisms you'll find are um, AES-XTS, uh, SHA-3, SHAKE. Um, we've updated the, uh, our AED versions of GCM-CCM, which I'll talk about a little bit more when I talk about the new functions that we've created. And then we've uh, uh, def uh, defined mechanisms for um, NIST's uh, flexible KDF uh, in addition, we've defined, defined the, a new set of objects. Those objects are um, uh, called profile objects. And what they allow you to do is uh, be able to specify that your token meets a particular profile that we, so we already have a spec that says here's profiles that you can say your, your, uh, your uh, token meets or your application requires. And these profile objects now allow you to query the application, uh, or the, for the application to query the PKCS11 module and from software tell what profiles they support. Okay, so we were adding new functions in uh, 3.0, which is why we moved the version number up from two. This is the first time we've added new functions in over 20 years. Um, this, um, in PKCS11, um, presents their, the, the functions through a function table pointer so that if your application using lots of tokens, um, you can go over and make a, a single query and get all the, the list of all the function tables um, in, instead of actually querying each of the, the functions from each of the modules because you have them all in your same address space. You can't use the linker to... So we We've, had def we've defined a new function to get these function pointer lists. And the reason for that is over the years, even though we weren't adding new functions, vendors would sometimes add vendor-specific functions so that their private applications can do special things with their uh, smart card. So if we start adding new functions at the end of the table, then those applications uh, and tokens will, will break. So. Um, in order to get a, uh, away from having to deal with this in the, in the future, our new function table list allows you to, to query multiple different function tables. We call, uh, so we, you specify an array of strings, and those strings tell you which function tables you want, and they're, they're identified by just the normal, uh, normal string. We define uh, PKCS11 version uh, 3.0. We'll also define uh, version uh, 2.0 to get the old function table list. Um, we've also defined what vendors are supposed to do if they want to add new functions. And that is they have to create interfaces with the string vendor, the vendor name, and then after that they can do whatever they want. Um, and that allows us to, uh, to have more tight control over uh, the function table pointer. Um, the other thing this interface does is it contains flags that specify some of the characteristics 
of the, uh, of the interfaces. So currently, the spec says if you open up PKCS11, initialize, do some stuff, and fork in the middle, any continual operation on the chi in the child in that PKCS11 should, uh, uh, will, will fail because the, mo uh, model or the, mo uh, the module should go into uninitialized state and you have to reinitialize to use it. So you can't fork and then share keys between the client and, uh, between client and, uh, and parent. Uh, this, this is not the normal way software expects to happen. If you didn't have a PKCS11 module in the middle and you do a fork, you get access to all the keys and everything to c continue to work. So we have defined one flag called fork safe interface. And if you specify that, you now get an interface that works like normal software, where if you fork, you have copies of the keys in both the child and the parent that they can both reference. And you don't have to re go back and reinitialize uh, the, the module in the client. OK, so why did we add, why did we go to the overhead of adding new functions. And the main driver is AEAD. So AEAD um, creates a challenge for our, the existing interface uh, for a couple of reasons. One is um, we need to add, uh, uh, we need to do it, uh, additional data that's associated with the encryption that's not the key and not the, um, the actual um, um, you know, data that we're encrypting and the output that we're, we're getting. Uh, we need to do that separately on each of the different packets because in AEAD, you say, okay, I want to do an encrypt and you have to specify an IV or a nonce for that particular encryption. And you also have to uh, do things like uh, get back the um, get back the uh, authenticated data. Um, so in order to, um, uh, and you have to do that on, on each different packet. In addition, AED says, uh, has additional data, authentication, uh, uh, additional authenticated data that gets, that gets part of that authentication, uh, but doesn't get encrypted. So, uh, so we needed to add a way to be able to get that data on each operation. Uh, and so right now, what we're, faking, we're faking it by using, we do an initialization with all the parameters uh, that, that allow us to specify those things, and then we do a single shot operation, and then to do the next packet, you have to do a reinitialization. <coughs> the problem with that is now you've lost, uh, you can't carry state across those operations because you've done an init, and a final and the state's clean at that point. So you can't cache information that you use for, um, for key scheduling, uh, which is a big part of the efficiency you need in, a, in many AED operations. And you can't do things like um, re, uh, bring back um, uh, a unique ID or a unique IV or nonce for each of these operations because you've lost the state of what the um, what the previous one was. So to fix that, we've now created a message interface. And these are the examples for encrypt. We actually have four flavors. We have encrypt, decrypt, sign, and verify of the, the new message interfaces. And the way uh, this works now is um, you do a message, uh, encrypt message, and then, or message encrypt init, and then you do either begin next or, or encrypt message. Um, and all of those will take mechanism or uh, uh, yeah, mechanism specific parameters that you can send data in and out that's out of band from the actual encryption that's going on. And then you, and then you do a, a, a final. Um, so this new interface, the reason, well, the reason we have begin and next is because some applications want to be able to stream the packet itself. So you still have, so you have a nested, you know, initialize operation and then initialize the packet or the message uh, uh, and continue on. 
Instead of having begin, next, and end, we added a flag on next that says this is the last one, so we don't have to have yet another function here. So this adds these five, uh, five new functions. It also adds it four times because there's four different flavors. So that's 20 new operations just trying to, uh, to, to do this. But now we can actually get an ID back and be able to do uh, fits to find stuff. Um, and uh, um, we can cache the uh, um, GCM key and not have to keep rescheduling it every time we, we do an operation. OK, since we took the overhead of um, adding new functions, um, we could go back, we were able to go back to the backlog of things like, gee, if we had it to do all over again, what would we do? Um, and added functions that were, you know, things we'd like to have, but it wasn't worth it, the, the pain of trying to add new functions. Now we have a way of adding new functions, so we've uh, picked up uh, these uh, two operations as well. The first one is um, login user. Works just like regular login, except you supply a username. So now your token could be something that um, connects back to an LDAP server, and now you can supply a token name to, or a username to it, and uh, when you log in, you logged in as that user onto the token. Um, some smart cards are starting to get smart that way too. Um, so that this allows us to now supply a username and, and log in, and then login works just like it did before uh, the rest of the way. The other one is cancel se session. So in this case, we have, um, uh, you s we have cases where you're starting a, a bunch of operations like encrypt, and you're in the middle of encrypt, uh, uh, you know, encrypt and it, and encrypt and encrypt and encrypt, uh, encrypt update, encrypt update, encrypt update. Uh, you're working your way uh, through, and then uh, you need to uh, uh, you need to abort this operation. Um, and the code that's doing the abort operation doesn't have all the information in order to do a, a nice, clean finalize, um, or it, uh, the finalize may fail. Um, but uh, so now we have a way of, or you may want to cancel more than one type of session. You, you may have these things start, you don't know which ones are going that, that, that some other part of your code has started up. So we now have a, a, a function called cancel session. It takes a flag that says what kind of operation uh, you want to cancel. Do you want to cancel the crypt, decrypt, sign, verify? Um, those flags are the same flags that are specified in the mechanism info when you ask the mechanism what, uh, what operations it can do. Um, and you do that, and now it will clean up from, an, uh, from any of the uh, initialized operations, and you can create new operations at that point. Okay, so um, when will the spec be ready? <laughs> it's currently in committee draft. All of these, we have text for all of this stuff. It's, uh, it's close to, to final uh, wording. We're now like fine tuning it in the, in the committee. We expect sometime in the next month to uh, approve that as a committee draft, the next month or two, depending on how long it takes us to, to clean up what we have. Once that happens, um, that spec will go up uh, public for public review in the OASIS, uh, um, OASIS group. And that process can take uh, three to six months. And at the end of that, we will now have the, the 3.0 spec, and you can start implementing with it. And that's all I have. <laughs> Any questions? Thank you. <laughs> Yakov, you have a question? What the what? Uh, yeah, that was at the, the beginning, the mechanisms. Okay, so I don't know um, okay. There weren't that many of them, um, but some of them are pretty important.
Oh, you're right. That's right. The EDE is also there. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I, I use this off, grab this off the table that we had, and it was missing from the table. Yeah. Any other questions? That's funny. No? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to get out your way, too. <laughs> Let you, uh, oh, oh, no, I'm not on until 12.30. Oh, okay. What did say hi? I'm uh, Russ Doty. Hi. And working with uh, TPM stuff. Oh, of course. With Mark Thacker and the uh, rest of the security team. And there's a uh, proposal to use PCS 11. Uh -huh. So we're trying to uh